What's up, everybody? Welcome to the pre-flip. That is two E's, James. Pre-flip. I'm joined by James Bot. How you doing, James? I am doing very well, for the most part, trapped in my own home. You know, I think many people are at the moment, and I've just been playing a lot of Rocket League. And I honestly don't think that would have changed much. Maybe you would go to the gym <laughs> a little bit more. That's about it, right? That is true. Yeah, yeah. our gym is shut down, so it's, it's, I, I, I used our ottoman as a workout bench. And nice. I, I nice. That, so that worked out. Uh, but this uh, pre-flip episode number five is brought to you by Prediction Esports. That is two E's in Prediction. And um, you can catch us live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Prediction Esports. Two E's once again. Live Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And we finally have hit that sweet spot of actually making it to 9 p.m. Because if it was still at 3 p.m., James, I'd be in trouble. Because my wife is back to work, and that means I have to take over watching two kids during the day because there's no That would just cares. mean that we'd have two guest stars on the show, right? That's true. I have to try and get Giblet on the final show uh, for RLCS at the very end. I'm going to try and plan something, but we'll see if it works. So a little spoilers ahead of the RLCS this weekend. But you can catch us on my YouTube, youtube.com slash Gibbs00, Prediction Esports. It's also on their YouTube, I believe. I'm actually not sure if they put it up there, but still. Go check it out either way. They have their other podcast. That's Team Fight Tactics, Dota, Smash, and some business esports talk there. And then, of course, it's on iTunes and Spotify. Leave a review on iTunes. James might read it in a demonic voice. I'm just going to keep uh, saying that, James, so you're on the hook for it each week. And uh, also on Spotify. So go check those out. They'll be in the descriptions below wherever you are watching this. Um, unless you're on Twitch, which I don't really have the links right now. But maybe someone does. If not, look for it on my YouTube. Uh, but... I think that's all the stuff. Oh, yeah, and support the stream on Twitch. If you have a Twitch Prime, throw it at them. Throw it at Prediction Esports. Why not? Support the show. But on that, James, let's get the show on the road, all right? We always start with a must-see, and I want to start with you because I have a very particular thing that I want to talk about. So I want you to start in the must-see matchup from last week of RLCS. Okay, this one, this one is a tough one. Honestly, I think my must-see match would be Mm, it's one of mouse's series i think okay. i might go with the mouse versus endpoint series uh it was really? just so okay. much fun to see arju come in in this situation and thrive yeah it was it was there was so many uh series to pick from i feel like this weekend and to me probably the most uh, my most favorite storyline was arju so i think watch either one of mouse series whether that's you know mouse versus endpoint or mouse versus barca mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun to watch arju play yeah, I would suggest Mouse versus Barca, like if you really want to see RG play, because I feel like he popped off in that series. He had two overtime goals, plenty of like playmaking passes that worked out really well for the team. The first series, I feel like Speed really carried that squad a lot, but RG did what he had to. And again, that's hard shoes to fill no matter who you're subbing in for when you go into the RLCS for the first time. So hats off to RG there. All right, James, my pick. And we're going to talk about this now. Vitality versus Veloce. And for playoff implications, it really didn't matter that much. Veloce was trying for a top four spot. But at the end of the day, there was two stories. There was the Golden Striker race, which Fairy Peak ended incredibly quickly in game one with eight yeah. goals. That's an RLCS record. Eight goals. And that's insane because it that goes all the way back to season one, I believe, with Cooks here uh, in the regional championship playoffs of Qualifier 2 versus Doomsy. Um and that's also when people actually scored a lot of goals. So, an incredible were record. were terrible back then. Yes. And Veloce was one of the best in the league coming into this weekend. So, right there, we saw Fairy Peak just destroy K-Dop for Golden Striker. But K-Dop got a lot of assists that game. After game two, they were exactly tied. K-Dop and Alpha for Clutch Playmaker. And then things got weird. <laughs> like, after uh, nothing mattered anymore, it just came down to... Who can pass it to Ferry to score a goal to win the clutch playmaker? Uh, even there was a zero second play at the end of game four that Kadop just did not score on purpose because Alpha passed the ball to him and he would have lost clutch playmaker. <laughs> and um, it was pretty interesting to watch. Uh, at the end of the day, Kadop did finally score a goal from Alpha and Alpha won clutch playmaker. But they talk about it a bit on their streams how Kadop was getting tilted because Ferry kept missing shots when Kadop would pass it to him. And um, they were just trying to play along with this. But the one thing that irks me the most, and this is kind of a half joke, but still, like Alpha won the clutch playmaker. He's going to split that money with Kadop. Alpha. Uh, even if you lost Clutch Playmaker, you should tell Kadop to pay you because I'm going to go over 
their <laughs> RLCS earnings or their Rocket League earnings right now. KDOP, I understand you're competitive, but goddamn, man, this is Alpha. He's not made a lot of money yet uh, in this game. You've made the most. So KDOP has made $331,000 and $830 and 64 cents. That's KDOP's money. So 331000 Alpha has made $38,524.80. Now, this is according to esports earnings. So, you know, just 300k more. He's won a lot. Yeah. Alpha Alpha's new. He's new to the scene. He hasn't been Kadop has been collecting org checks for like 15 years as well. He's basically tenured yeah. into the system. Alpha just got here. Alpha, you know, let him let him keep it. Exactly. Let him keep his clutch playmaker, man. It's only $1,000, Kadop. You've made 300,000 more like on prizes alone. Come on, man. What are you doing? Like, even if you tied Kadop, just give it to Alpha. What are you doing, Kadop? Come on, man. Like I get it. You're competitive. <laughs> And you want to win the award, that's perfectly fine. But but make it alpha split your money. Now, obviously, it was probably alpha. It was just like, yeah, we'll split because K-Dup was getting tilted. And honestly, it was probably about money because the rumors are always like K-Dup, he plays for money. That's what he does, which I love. Go for it, K-Dup. And it's worked out for him. $331,000 later. But come on, man. It's $1,000. Let alpha keep it. Oh, man, that irks me. Kind of, not really. Uh, but those are the must-see games. It seemed like uh, Europe was a bit more uh, action-packed. But, James, are you ready for your demonic voice? I don't want to I don't want to do it. I'm losing. <laughs> I'm depressed. <laughs> you, James, you can do it. I believe okay, in you. Okay, fine. All right, you ready? All right, so we asked for iTunes reviews. And if you put a review out there, James Bot might read it in his demonic voice. And uh, we got one here from Othos RL. He gave it five stars. James Watt, are you ready? The pre-flip is almost as entertaining to watch as Turbo's own goals. Five stars. (laughs) It didn't work. It didn't work. Your sound bar, your sound thing didn't work. (laughs) But that was actually pretty good anyway. Okay. (laughs) It's because I have, uh, I'm called through my, here, you'll have to recall me. Okay. I'm going to recall you real quick. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because we need this. But that was actually pretty good. So I felt like that was hilarious that we, uh, hold on. I'm going to leave this call. Uh, That's kind of like when uh, people use those face mask things. Hello. Can you hear me now? (laughs) Yes. There we go. That's much better. (laughs) All right, go for it, James. The pre-flip is almost as entertaining as watching Turbo's own goals. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing that's great is, like, have you ever seen face rig when it breaks for streamers? Yeah. <laughs> and then the, their faces. Like, that's what it felt like when you were reading it the first time. But there you go. Thank you, Othos, for the iTunes review. We appreciate you it. stop me, Gibbs. I'll never forgive you. That was pretty. Like, I was trying to figure out, I'm like, is it actually working? But, see, that shows that it's not just the demonic voice. You still got to play it up. James is a very skilled man. Very yep. skilled man. Now you know. Now so you know well how to done. do it. <laughs> so, well done. Anyway. All right. Let's get into our 50-50 because we're going to go straight into this because this is going to be... Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to go to MVPs first. Then we'll go uh, into 50-50 to talk about bracket predictions. So, we're going to talk about who we think we're picking for MVPs. It might not be set in stone just yet. We have all week to decide, but who we're, you know, uh, siding towards. Maybe uh, pick our top three out here, James, and explain why. Uh, so we'll talk about this. This is League Play MVP. They get $2,500. It is voted on by casters, by Psionics, yada, yada. Um, so we'll start with NA. And I think NA is kind of an interesting one where Shock, like, if you went for the first five weeks, I think no matter what, he wins, right? five or six weeks, and then, like, started to slip up a little bit towards the end of the season. Maybe, like, I think his worst week was probably when they played two games. Luckily, they played flight in one of those. And then, obviously, the final week, he didn't do anything because they got perfectly swept by G2. Um, I still think Shock narrowly edges out for me over the likes of maybe JNAPS I would have number two and Atomic in number three. Uh, how are you feeling about that list, James? You know, I just i i wanted i wanted shock to do more in that final week. Yeah. So I'm a little bit torn. Um, for me, especially, I always like picking teams that do do very well, and I think that shock did shock and his team did very well. They outperformed all expectations. So I think right now, for me, I, I'm still going to do a little bit more deliberation. But sh- shock is up there at number one. Mm-hmm. But I really am going to have to go back to the series, re- rewatch a lot of these series because I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of benefit of coming top two that I think yeah. you might need to reward people for. So while shock is very good, 
I always weigh the success of the team because to me, uh, the MVP definition, and, th and this isn't just for me, this is the MVP definition that we use, is the player that contributes most towards a team's success. Mm. So a team has to have success for them to be considered uh, for the MVP. And so now that's going, I just have to weigh that in because Space sure. Station went eight and one. G2 finished top two. They also crushed the Sonics in the final week. Yeah. So I, I think Shock's up there, but I'm going to have to do a little more thinking. And then I agree, the other people that you're looking at is, is JNAPs. I think AXB's in the conversation. Uh, it'll be it'll be fun to to think about, and I'm still going to wait a little longer before I yeah, put out there the who I picked. My um, thing with Space Station is, like, I think just all three players played exceptionally well. Like, I think it was relatively even. Like, I don't even know if I think AXB was the best player on that team this season. I think early on at times he was, but I think by the end, Arsenal picked it up. And, like, the whole team was so good together that I think it's hard to pick, like, a valuable player like out of that team just because I think they all carried, like, almost equal weight, which I think sometimes hurts uh, your case for an MVP. Um, like even if you have the most success, it's just, well, like if you replace one of those players, how far down do they go? And then it's like, if you replace XB, how far down do they go? But if you replace Arsenal, it, like w wouldn't they fall yeah, it's, just it's as tough. far, it's right? It's tough because so it's Space like, Station yeah. was clearly the best. They were clear. They are undisputed. Number one, there's no team that is, that you can argue is better than them at the moment. Yeah. But you're right. They just shared the burden so much. They shared the load that. Nobody really stood out a ton on that uh, roster. And even when you're looking at, you know, it's it's a lot easier when you're having MVP performances like you see out of Europe. I think Europe, to me, has a clear MVP that I'm kind of shocked that not more people are are picking. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, the, the ideology of MVP because I do feel like all of us have slightly different versions of what we think it should be. Like you were saying the definition with the uh, uh, contributes the most to the team's success. And I think normally that's where I fall. I have some outliers like last season I had Bluey because of just how, how good he was at carrying that team. Even though they didn't have the greatest season, they wouldn't have even been close to what that was. It, uh, without Bluey, Please don't in my get opinion, started with I know me about we're not going to talk about that. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. We had James picking Freaky there. That's perfectly Freaky fine. Freaky got robbed of MVP okay. last season. I'm convinced. Fair he enough. He was robbed of MVP. Fair enough. And Scrub got robbed this season before. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's always Europe, right? I guess I don't know. But um, my thing with so I feel like JNAPs, like I can't really point to right now. Like I have to go back to like the clutch moment, right? Where I think he played a phenomenal season. Uh, one of the best seasons, I think, out of all the players. And I think it was because, like, at times with Chicago, the inaccuracy, he had to pick it up from him or Rizzo on the defensive side here or there. Uh, but I can't pick out those clutch moments as easily as with Shock, where Shock, game fives, is like, all right, we know Shock's going to score. Or, like, or uh, even back to week one, playing energy where they lose in five, but Shock puts out a phenomenal performance that almost got uh, the Sonics the win there. Just like performances like that, I think Shock just barely uh, edges my yeah. number one pick. For I, I I totally agree. I t I think that's a very respectable opinion. To me, sure. it just comes down to um, placing. G two did better. G two yep. did better than the Sonics, and they played in the final week, and the Sonics got perfect swept. Like they got not, not only did they get beat, they got obliterated. They got, <laughs> they got, they just, they just got melted. It was as simple as that. It was one of the biggest beatings that we've ever seen in RLCS history. So to me, that yeah. also weighs into the conversation because that was for top two. Sure. If shock shows up, that, in that's that a big series, game. Yeah. If shock shows up in that series, then the season's completely different for them for the end, because you're finishing top two. You already finished with that big top four money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that's that was an important series. So I just have to think more about is no like is being invisible in that series and is G2 clapping the, the crap out of them? <laughs> you know, how yeah. much is that worth in the MVP vote? And I still have to I have to deliberate. Yeah. And then like so I also like to look at like your games against the top six. So the other playoff teams, because like a lot of people can pad stats at versus flight right so that really doesn't matter usually. whoa so calling them out by hey, name hey well i'm just saying like the bottom feeders right so and g2 they love to feed off the bottom feeders so um like for instance sure g2 beat sonics but sonics versus playoff teams i believe went three and two g2 went two and three so it's also like there's that and then there's also the recency bias of like we just saw that game 
like if that game happened earlier in the season, would it have as much impact, you know, and all that stuff, which I think is hard. Uh, the one thing I don't like to give uh, like awards to is the expectation. Cause I always feel like that's weird. Like, I think that's why XB might be up there or elevated for a lot of people just because last season he was more quiet on the team and then he showed up this season, but I yeah, think it's he, still he performed better than expectations. I, yes. I get that. Right? Yeah. So I don't like to use that for the MVP folks. I like to just uh, take a season like as um, its own thing. Uh, same with Sonics. Like th the Sonics did better than expectations, but I think the argument uh, can stand there because Shock might have carried them because of that. Like he carried the two yes. others, and so and I yeah. think I think to me enough success is that like at right, especially this season, it becomes a little bit different because you're not automatically guaranteed a world championship spot, right? Yeah, that that and, and that does season, cloud it. Yeah, you're guaranteed the world championship. So I I pretty much always look to see who's top two and who was the most uh, important person for helping get that team top two. But I'm going to be more flexible on that definition this uh, season just because it's only the regional championship. So it doesn't really mean that much of a difference. It's it's purely prize, pu prize pool. Yeah. But that also does mean a lot. So that's another reason why I got to think more. Yeah. F uh, for me, like, I think the expectations thing does hurt energy. Like, even if I'm not thinking about it, just because, like, they still had a relatively good season. But I don't consider any of those three MVPs. Like, I think it was because Turbo did so well at the beginning of the season, but then kind of fell flat towards the end. That kind yes. of hurt me there. For Cloud9, like, I think Squishy's the most consistent, but I don't think they win the games without Gimmick. But they also don't lose the games if they um, if Gimmick didn't play that bad. So I don't think there's anyone there. And then I think on Ghost, I think... Atomic did pretty well for a team that didn't have a lot of success, but well, he's still had some very big series. Yeah, like well. he still played incredibly well. Uh, so that's why I would nod probably third place for me. Kind of, kind time. of slim pickings this season. No, yeah. like uh, the the there wasn't really a, a standout performance. There was some good ones, but nobody was undisputed. It was so close too, because Shock was this close. Like. It, but if he takes down G2, then he gets it easily. There is oh, yeah. no argument here at all. Yeah. But because yeah, that was the of how flat that was, it's just like, oh, yeah. that hurts Not it. only did they lose, but closer. how they lost, I yep. think, can affect the decision. For sure, for sure. So that's NA. Now let's talk about Europe. And I, I think I know where you're going with this, James. But if you want to give out who you think is winning this hands down, go for it. So, so I, I think Ferry has to win this, man. Okay. I think Ferry... He set an RLCS record in the final game of the season against a, a, another opponent that was looking to finish at the top. He was rock solid all season long. You go back and look at the shots that he was scoring this season. It was, it was unbelievable precision shooting. Mm -hmm. Ferry was a machine. He was a machine. And the only thing, the only reason why I think people aren't going to vote for him as much is because of how good K dot played and how good Alpha played. Yeah. Yes, they all played really well. But if you look at Fairy's performance in a vacuum, you look at all the shots that he hit in a vacuum, and you look at how dominant Vitality was and how big of a part Fairy had to play, I really think that Fairy deserves uh, that number one spot for MVP. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I think you know the other person out here that I, I think also deserves a shout out is K dot, yeah. and then obviously Astral. Astral for Dignitas, a very uh, rock solid player, had a lot of highlight plays this season. But again, you know, P Panda also had a very good season as well. But to me, Vitality was just so, so good, so dominant, had so much success this season that I really feel one of those players deserves MVP. And for me, Ferry was the standout guy on Bend Vitality, and he he deserves it. I think you're selling me on this, James. Like, I think before coming into this conversation, I would probably put Astral number one, but I had doubts. And this one, I was definitely going to go back because I do feel like Astral just gets that bonus of like, he's a mechanical God and he'll make things look incredible. He had a couple clutch game five moments. I believe the one versus mouse. He didn't get credit for the assist. I think, I think that was the overtime one that I'm thinking of, but yeah, he, he set up that entire play to win that about, series. Think, think about the, the series where Vitality played. Yeah. Dignitas Gibbs. Yeah. You remember what happened? Astral, he, he was nowhere to be found after that overtime loss in game three. That's true. He was nuts, though, games one and two. He was nuts, fair. but they lost. <laughs> no, they lost. That's, hey, that's perfectly fair. And the thing I was going to say was, like, I feel like early on in the season, KDOP was probably doing a little bit more of yes, the heavy lifting. I would agree with that. But if you look at their schedule for Vitality, who do they play at the start of their season? Literally no one. 
They played yeah. all the non-playoff teams. When it came down to the meat of their schedule, Fairy Peak shined. And he shined. He, did. he shined pretty damn brightly. Versus Reciprocity, I believe, was the eight-goal affair that he had. Uh, then versus Dig, I think he also put on another great performance. Um, and obviously versus uh, Veloce. By the end of it, like it doesn't matter Like after game two, like after they win two games. But still, or after game three, I should say. Um, but still, that eight goal performance, he put up over a goal per game. Like I'm actually gonna look, I'll look at the stats real quick because I want to see. Um, I believe well, I don't he, even remember the almost, last time we've scored this many goals. Uh, uh, for, for, it's for, probably been a couple Europe, seasons. Oh, it's been a while. It's, like I it's think rarely anymore does it get up over a goal a game. Yeah, like I think it was uh, the old Dignitas when they dominated. Almost all three of them almost had a goal per game, but that was like. Maybe the last time. Um, I'm actually going to check here real quick. All right. So he had 1.03 goals per game. And let's look at the teams real quick. You ready for this? He yes. scored TSM as a team 1.05 goals per game. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like he almost scored more goals than an entire team. And they played Tigre? exactly the same amount of games. Tigray Tigre <laughs> tweeted about this. Tigray tweeted yeah. saying, Fairy Peak almost scored as many goals in a single game as I did all season. <laughs> all right. So you ready for this? 39 games played for both TSM and Fairy Peak. TSM scored 41 goals. Fairy Peak scored 40. <laughs> that, that's, that's insane. Incredible. That's insane. That he was incredible. one goal short. I, like, I think on that alone and my hatred for TSM, I feel like I got to put Fairy Peak first. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, I, man. I think, I think a, a lot of the, if if people vote Astral on this one, if Astral gets this one, I think Astral I think might get be, it. I, I think yeah. it'll be a robbery. I think it'll be a highway robbery because to me, this is another situation where it's so clearly Fairy Peak. It's so clearly yeah. Fairy Peak that uh, I would be disappointed if it's not Astral. I think is a is a worthy player. He's a good player. He did have he was the MVP of his team. Sure, but I don't think he's the MVP of the league. I think Fairy's the MVP. Yeah, it's close. Like I think. Uh, the arguments are K-Dop's going to take some of those votes because he was so close in both awards, right, for goals and assists. Uh, yeah. But, like, top three, I think, like, it's hard. Like, this might be the first season that I actually just might put Fairy Peak and K-Dop. Like, I almost never yeah, do that. No, I, I will put Fairy Peak. That's not what I'm going to be yeah. doing. I'm putting Fairy Peak my number one. K-Dop is my number two. Astral, I've got third. Yeah. Number like, I, so I think I'd put Astral at least number two. But, um, like, he was good. Like, 1.4 points per game or goals plus assists per game, third in the league. Uh, like on a team of Dignitas that didn't like obviously have the offensive output that Vitality did. And I think honestly with Fairy Peak and Kate up, you can't discredit Alpha uh, either on this team. Like I think he really helped this team like of push course. Fairy Peak and Kate up to new heights, which was great. But of course for the MVP, you know, yeah, uh, James, I think you're selling me on it. I think you yes, are. Yes, Gibbs, come right. on over to the Fairy Peak okay. camp. I think I'm going. We can I wear the same shirt. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of shirts. Let's get to our 50-50, James, oh, no. because it's not looking good for you, buddy. Uh, so the bet is, um, it's supposed to be at Worlds, but we'll make a video or something for it. Uh, whoever loses the 50-50 for the season has to wear a shirt with the other person's face on it and some type of one-liner. We haven't decided the one-liners yet. If you want to think of any one-liners for me or James to have to wear that are not, you know, racist or something, uh, write them in the YouTube comments and uh, let us know. But... Let's get into this, James, because this week I even gave you a freebie, James. I gave you. I, dude, Pittsburgh I should have had a freebie. This was I blame Barcelona on all of this stuff, man. I had faith in them and they they oh, took man. my faith. They walked up to the toilet and they 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 just flushed all of it down. I have no faith left. It's yeah. all down the gutter. So before this week, I was up three games on you, and then I went uh, one extra game up on you this week because of that probably Barca mouse pick. The other ones that we uh, were. Uh, like against each other was uh, Sonics and G2. Uh, uh, I went G2. Space Station G2. I went Space Station and you went G2. So you flipped on those two. And then Pittsburgh Knights Cloud 9. I PK. You had Cloud 9. And then finally, yeah, Barca Mouse, which I thought I was going to lose when I hear subs coming in. But uh, that didn't happen. So that should have cool. been. That was the difference for me is, is was Barcelona yep. just choking. I, that, I was so excited. When I saw that scrub wasn't going to be playing, I'm thinking, oh, Gibbs doesn't Easy. have time to change his picks. This is going to be my games. And then uh, then Arju happened. Yeah, oh, man. Hats off to him. Hats off to him, though, Arju. But that means, James, we're going to change how this is. So this is going to turn into a point system now, all right? Okay. So I have 25 points. You have 21 points. 
going into the regional championship, which is your last chance here, James, to catch right. up to me for this bet. Now, let me know um, if you like these numbers. Like, I was thinking we do one point for a team that makes the semifinals, like, if you predict them. You get one additional point um, if you get them in the correct spot, because obviously, you know, the third place or the fourth place spot in the semis. So, at most, two points there. Then you get three more points um, uh, if you get the finalist right. Then you get four more points uh, if they win the whole thing and you predict that right. Does that sound fair? Relatively? Yeah, I think I think you could just do um, you know one point uh, for the semis and also the um, the court. Like, what is it? There's technically so I, I think we should get a point also for picking the Ghost Cloud Nine matchup and the Barca okay. Veloce matchup. So I Fair. think getting a okay. quarter, getting sure. giving a point for the quarterfinals as well. Okay. So do you want to? Okay. And then we'll keep it how, like, say you guess wrong the third, fourth, but if they still make it to the semis later, you still get a point. Is that fine? Yeah, I think that. I think, okay. So I so think only the lower quarters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then you'll get the additional point uh, if you guess them correct uh, order. Um, so if you guessed the third, fourth place game, you are getting one extra point anyway, uh, because they'll go to the semis and you'll get one more point for the correct semifinals. Sound good. Beautiful. All Perfect. right. So what we're going to do, James, since you have to make up ground, I will give you my brackets first, and then you can decide what I got wrong or how you want to change it to try and catch okay. it. Okay. I'm going to go for the win. Yeah, I know. And I'm going to give you one a little bit here. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk about NA first. And then we'll move over to Europe for our regional championship predictions. I actually should bring up our fancy little 50-50 graphic here on the stream. Oh, look at this. Production quality, James. All right. Let me wow. get up the uh, North America bracket. So, again, it is a page, a page playoff for the three through six seeds. Then it goes back down to a normal just win, uh, uh, lose, and go home, basically, uh, for the semifinals. So, first match of the day, which I'm going to have to figure out how I have to how I'm going to write this, but we'll figure that out. Um, so first match of the day, we'll start in the lowers, the lower bracket, basically cloud nine versus ghost game in. Uh, so cloud nine, they swept ghost game in just two weeks ago. Uh, cloud nines won nine games in a row. They look like the hottest team, maybe in all of North America. I think it's very difficult to pick against cloud nine right now. Like I think ghost has the shot because they're very inconsistent right now, but they do have pretty high peaks, but I, like, I can't do it here, James. I can't. So, I'm going to go Cloud9 uh, over Ghost. So, uh, that'll give me one spot there. And then for the other one, Sonics and Energy. I'm not that high on the Sonics. I'm really not. Like, I think they are slowly coming back down to earth where we thought they would be maybe just outside the playoffs. While I don't think they're that bad, like, I think they are still pretty good. I don't think they're uh, energy, and when energy uh, shows up for playoffs, they mean it. I'm going to go energy here over the Sonics. Um, well, I'm I'm going to agree with you on NRG, but I'm going to go Ghost over Cloud9. Okay. All right. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, let me finish my bracket to oh, the semis. Oh, you want to go through the whole no, thing? No, 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 no. So I'll just do it through the semis, and then we'll talk about yours. Okay. Because I think it'll be a little easier. Anyway, okay. it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go um, Cloud9 over the Sonics as well in the lower because I think they can do it. Cause I thought uh, the Sonics might've looked best when they played cloud nine, that games one and two, and then they lost that series. I think the time is up for Sonics at this point. And I think, uh, you know, at that point I would have all of the big three back in the semifinals, James. I'm just saying, just saying. All right. The big so what the big three, James, I'm what bringing it back. I'm what, bringing what it back. About? What is that? What is that? Is that some, I don't know what that <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, I know. Right. All right. So you're going ghost over cloud nine. And then what do you got with Sonics and NRG? NRG all the way. I'm with you. I think Sonics yeah. are kind of cooling off. I think that uh, you can't get beat as bad as they got beat in the last week of league play and have a lot of confidence going into the regional championship. That one did hurt. Espe yeah, and especially after NRG losing this close uh, game five series, I, I don't think that uh, Turbo and Justin are going to play as poorly as they did. Uh, I think they just, I think they they just had some some rough few weeks. You and could, they're going to bounce back in the regional championship, 100%. I have I have so much faith in energy. I would be surprised if they win the whole thing. Yeah, you could say they were slacking, and now they're like, all right, now it's time we got to play. But yeah. on Monday in the Astro Tournament, they lost to a rival series squad. So who knows? Who knows? And that was the best of seven series, I think. So you never know. But I'll, but the, but that's a weekly, so whatever. Uh, all right, so that would mean you have Sonics versus Ghost. Who do you got there? 
So I'm going to go ghost on that one as well. Okay, so we're both on the same page here. All right. For the same reasons, yeah, they're just cooling off. Cause, uh, yep. So I agree with you because I think if Ghost beats Cloud9, they're probably in form on the day, right? So yeah. I think then they can make a run for sure. So I would agree with you there. All right, so that goes to the semifinals where I got G2 versus Energy. We both have G2 versus Energy, so I guess we can pick this one together. I'm going to go G2 over NRG because I think I'm going to flip a coin and it's going to be G2's day. So I'm going to go G2. Gosh, I do think G2 is playing better. I do think G2 is playing better than NRG at the moment. But I think that NRG is going to come into this week. I think Turbo's slump will be over. Turbo's kind of been in a little bit of a slump lately. I think it'll be over by now. Um, G2 is looking very in form. But this one is a coin toss, in my opinion. And I think that uh, because I'm behind so far in points, I have to go NRG on this pick. Uh, all right. But I but I do feel, I feel like it's NRG close. has the ability to. And to honestly flip a coin. So yeah. might as well go with the pick that will help me gain some ground. And two weeks ago, they beat G2, right? So it's like. They did. They did. They, they, seven. Could, they definitely can. Yeah. But it was um, close. It went all the way to game five. Yep. It should be another close series. Again, these are all best of seven throughout the day. So, so uh, it's going to be a long day, but it's going to be a lot of fun because we'll get high-level Rocket League across the board. All right. So that leaves. So I got Space Station versus Cloud9. And I think this is where the Cloud9 train stops. I think Space Station <laughs> is pretty good. I'm going to give this to Space Station. Like, they don't necessarily uh, have to wow this season. Like, I feel like they really haven't. But they don't have to. They're uh, playing just completely sound defense, controlling the field. The passing plays they put on last week versus uh, E United were just like nuts. Like they were just like, we're, uh, we're going to freestyle on you because we're better than you. Yeah, uh, that musty flick, that Arsenal yeah, hit. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was like they were playing uh, just scrims, you know. And last time day. they were feeling that good, they went top four at Worlds, right? So if that keeps up, like, like if they have that confidence, that swagger, like I think they're going to be a team very, very hard to beat. So I got Space Station there. You got Space Station versus Ghost. Who you got? So I'm with you on this one. I think that the, the Space Station is the end of the line for all of the teams that are coming through that bottom part of the bracket. Yeah. So Space Station, I have uh, beating Ghost as well and going to the finals. All right, James, here's where things get interesting, and here's where you can definitely catch up because I am going G2 to take down Space Station. They beat them in the past two Astro Weeklies, like over these past two weeks. They just beat them 4-1 again, and I think if G2 beats Energy, G2 is playing well, and I think if G2 plays at the best of their ability, I don't think anyone can beat them in NA. I think they can only beat themselves. So I am going to go G2 here. I am going to ride that coin flip all the way to the regional championship winners. I think that's smart. I think that's smart. I think it would be fun to see that. I think G2 has what it takes, but I also feel like Space Station deserves a lot of credit this season. Absolutely. They, they're in a team that has come in. I don't think, even though they, they are 8-1, and one, and even though people are saying that they're the best team right now, I don't think that people are really expecting them to win. I think a lot of people would pick G2. A lot of people would pick Energy, NRG. Yeah. People, and I think Space Station has earned that respect from me. They, they have played incredibly well. All of their wins have been pretty convincing. They've only had one series go to Game 5. And they and they won. It was against NRG, and the only series they lost was early to a Sonics team that was scorching hot. All the other series that Space Station has played have been very one-sided, and so I'm going to give the win to Space Station. I think that they pull through, Over and uh, just, I just ha yeah, I have to, I have to give it to them this time. They earned this pick for me. All right, and hey, James, like uh, uh, this could decide everything. So all right, I like it because we have a lot of different picks here. That G2, I like. I don't like the idea that I have to rely on G2 now <laughs> to win this. But, so what is it? The question becomes, who, who do you pick on game day? <laughs> because, <laughs> hey, because all right. Because you have so, a long history with picking in G2. Yeah, so, but here, so here is the kicker, James. So the world is ending, and I figured out why. I went 9-0 and o on the RLCS for my G2 picks this season. Oh my gosh, this is the end. That is why it's over for everyone. Everyone stay yeah, indoors. Yeah, are you gonna until say that I on pick broadcast? Wrong. No, I can't say that. On okay. broadcast, I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to, but I can't. Yeah, probably... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did tweet it, but I uh, uh, yeah, I don't think I can tweet. say that. Yeah, I don't think I can say that. So I was nine and zero, which is not something that usually happens for me. And uh, so that means either it, it all comes crumbling down, or I keep riding it. I'm not really sure. But one thing is, we're all in trouble. <laughs> That's what we know. Uh, all right, let's move over to Europe. Uh, we got a pretty different take on NA, so you might not have to go as wild here. And I think th uh, this one maybe is a little bit less wild in general 
because oh, yeah. I think vitality is uh, kind this is of going to be front. pretty yeah. straightforward for us. Yeah, I think across the board, honestly, like I think this regional championship on paper. We know exactly like how this plays out outside of maybe Dig versus Wreck. Uh, but let me get into it first. Uh, Wreck versus Mouse, it's a sub. Uh, they are 4-0, but I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going Wreck over Mouse. Uh, Wreck is a solid team. They're showing up at the end of the season. They know how to win regionals. I don't think Mouse can do it. I'm going to go Wreck there. Uh, the defense on Mouse, I'm a little worried about because Cook's here at times. A lot of pre-jumps, a lot of bad saves. Um, like if that keeps up, Mouse is in trouble. And actually, I should have picked the other one first, so we'll do and that. And you now. could also tell for that Arju at times was also a little uncomfortable on where he was and when he had to go. The the game speed and RLCS is so much faster, even than you know Rank X is good, but being in a in a league match in the RLCS with the nerves affecting you and you have to be quick. Arju he did really well to get him this uh this finish the top yeah. four finish but I think that uh, they're not going to be able to take down reciprocity and I think they also kind of had an easy schedule they had endpoint who was a team that didn't have any like uh, anything to play for like at that point and then they're playing a Barca team that is just looking worse and worse every week it seems like so uh for that reason I'm going Veloce here like I think Veloce could still be the third best team in Europe um so I'm going to pick them here versus Barca in a very easy matchup where i think barca just hasn't been doing anything for me the past yeah, if you would have asked weeks. me in two weeks ago barca if they'd win mm -hmm. this i would tell you without a doubt uh, i i was so high on the barcelona train but they this past week has really burned me especially because they needed to play mouse who, who had a sub <laughs> yep and they lose and they that. still lost and that was for a top yeah. four spot like, yeah. come and on they man. Played, and they played tsm who has been having a terrible season and they lost as yep. well so I have zero faith in Barcelona anymore. I'm also picking Veloce in this matchup. Okay, and then finally, for the last one, we have Mouse versus Veloce. Like, I think we're probably both on the same page. We both like Veloce, Veloce. here. Yeah. Uh, Veloce's been uh, pretty good this season. Like, obviously, they fell short towards the end versus Dig and Vitality, but they kept Dig to five games, and a lot of those were uh, overtimes. Uh, four of those were overtimes. Vitality series was like that went five technically but it really didn't go five it was probably a 3-1 win for vitality um if they weren't playing for clutch playmaker uh but still J is a talented squad and uh mouse again they're playing with a sub they had a relatively easy schedule last week i don't see them uh, capitalizing on that so we got exactly the same into the semis here and i think we're gonna stay pretty close to the same all right james do you want to pick dig versus wreck first or you or, or, or do you want me to Okay. Going dig going dig I think I think that reciprocity played good defense. The the reason they won the games the, and they won the series was because they uh, did a better job uh, bumping and demoing in some big moments. Yeah. But the games they lost, they got slapped around. I think Dignitas just has too much firepower, and I don't have enough faith in the reciprocity defense nor offense at this point to to give them the win over Dignitas. I think that they played really well last week, but it. Uh, it easily could have gone the other way. Both overtime games that uh, the the both overtime games in this series that went to reciprocity. If they lose one of those, the series was over. Yeah, you know, I I I I, I think that it was good that for them that they won, but I don't think I think uh, you know seven out of ten times Dignitas is going to win that series. So I'm a little worried about Dignitas. I think I am going to pick Dignitas here, but Rex defense technically uh, is the better defense, number two in the league right now, uh, but. It, like, my worry is Diggs' defense has been, like, slowly getting worse throughout the season while their offense um, is getting better. But they've been reeling a bit. They've had a lot of close series, which I didn't think they would have. Uh, like, in the weekly tournament for Johnny Boy's thing, they just lost to Endpoint today. Um, now, again, those are weeklies. They probably don't take them, like, as seriously. But it was like we were in the late stages of that bracket. That's a bad loss. And it wasn't really like Digg was just, like, rotating flat. They were just missing the ball which is a bad sign. Um, I'm worried about Dig. Like, I think they have fallen hard. Like, it used to be them and Vitality are really close to each other. Vitality is just rising while Dig is falling. Like, I think there's a huge gap now between one and two. But I have to agree. I think Dig is going to win this. We haven't seen Shaw set have that Shaw set pop-off moment yet. But last regionals is when it came out. Who knows? It could happen again. I think that's the only way uh, Rec wins this series. Um but I think there's a shot. Like, I think this is going to go close. I think it'll be probably maybe at least game six, maybe game seven. Um, but I think Dig does prevail in the end. 
Um, and then on the other side, I assume Vitality versus Veloce. We're going with Vitality here. Yep. All right. I think we're having exactly the same bracket here, James. So it's going to all come down to G2 on the NA day <laughs> to see yeah. how this plays out. All right. Well, no. Well, no. Very early. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think we have to talk too much about Vitality Dig, but we'll mention it. I got Vitality. Um, I assume you also do. We both yeah. picked them earlier uh, in the season. And th that match was close. And Astro, again, when he's looking good, there's a chance. But my worry with Astro um, is just that tilt factor. I feel like sometimes, like, after they lose a game or two, then you're like, where'd Astro go? Like, what's happening? Yeah, um, when he's playing confidently and he's pl and you can tell he's in a good mindset, he's unstoppable. Yeah. But he, he can fall out of that mindset. And I just think Alpha's having... An amazing season two. Like I know it, we're going to talk about Kate up and Fairy Peak a lot, but like they would not be having uh, the season they're having without Alpha. Alpha. Yeah, it's the same. Great. It's to me, it's the same with uh, Violent Panda. You know, he's yeah. having a great st statistic season because uh, he's just got Astral, who's setting him up for so many goals now. Yeah, I just really like what uh, Alpha's doing. Like, I'm glad like the pressure didn't get to him this season, where it's like you're replacing scrub like everyone's like is this the wrong move and then it's like well alpha was the problem on tsm like we started to see that which i couldn't believe uh but we started to see that on reddit and through the community where people thought alpha was the problem on tsm and uh clearly that's not the case at least when comparing seasons uh vitality they're just too good i would love to see them versus uh the na guys because sometimes it's hard we think vitality's best in the world but it I could know. just be it's, it's that so NA... sad that there was not there's not a world championship yeah. this season because we've had some really interesting uh developments especially with vitality playing as well as they have and uh S space station doing as well as they've been doing and also if sonics end up finishing top four it's it's a real shame that we don't have the return of dapper oh, yeah to the world championship yeah for sure like also just like uh anyone that qualifies right it's top four it's just because like, even with g2 perfectly sweeping sonics like how cool would that have been from eighth to now you qualify for worlds by perfectly sweeping yeah you know? but yeah eh, um it is what it is and obviously it could be worse right so we're all doing okay here uh so that's good at least uh we all have our health and all that so and we get to be entertained by rocket league so that's always good but all right james so Here's what it comes down to. You're down by four points. For uh, Europe, the same exact bracket, which I think is pretty much on paper the way it goes. Uh, for NA, you can gain a point back by getting Ghost. Actually gain two point, or three points back from that because if Ghost makes that run and makes semis or if Cloud9 makes that run and goes to semis, that's a three-point swing uh, either way. Uh, so that's a big one. And then it comes down to... Like, if that doesn't go your way, then you absolutely need the rest of the bracket to go perfectly for you. And that would be Energy beating G2 to get the finalist of the plus three. And then the winner be Space Station to get the plus four. So if that happened, we would actually exactly tie. Now oh. that I'm doing the math. Like, if uh, Cloud9 so, makes the I run. Mean, so I have to be perfect. No, 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 no. So I'm saying, like, uh, if Cloud9 made the run uh, over Ghost to make the semifinals... Uh -huh. The rest of your semis have to be perfect. Gotcha. So you would need energy to beat G2 and then space station to beat energy. And we right, would well, exactly so tie. Wiggle room. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's some there. There's some there for sure. We'll see how it plays out. I don't know what we do for a tie. Maybe we both get a shirt with both our faces on. No, I have no idea. No, we'll figure it out. If we out. tie, then we'd have to, we'd have to like, we'll wait. do something. Yeah, we'd we'll wait for something, something to come up. <laughs> we'll wait for like a Johnny Boy uh, match with Space Station versus we could do. We could do a best predict. of three marbles race. I actually got a good idea, James. Uh, predict the Vitality versus Dignitas final series score as gotcha. our tiebreaker. Okay. Just right. in case we need it. I'll go first. I'm going to say a 4-1 for Vitality. I'll say 4-2. All right. Now, if it goes 7, you win. Um, If it's a sweep, I win as well, okay? So then it's yep. easier. Yep, so it's a 50-50. All right. So there we go. So that is how – I don't know why I wrote games. Uh, I'm thinking of both of our names together, so I write games instead of James or Gibbs. All right, perfect. So that works. There you go. Um, all right, so now there can't be a tie. So it'll be a beautiful, beautiful scene. But that's it, James. I think that's all we got 
If, uh, well, Twitch has any question, real quick, if anyone wants to throw a question while I'm doing the outro, we'll add it to the YouTube or to the Spotify and iTunes show. So feel free to throw something out there in chat. Uh, but this has been the pre-flip episode five with myself and James Bot. Go follow James on Twitter. Go James Bot. Go. Go follow myself, Gibbs00. It never works well in fonts. I really should change my name, James, but it's not going to happen. Uh, it's okay, Gibbs. I know. I know. But this is brought to you by Prediction Esports. That is two E's in Prediction. You can go on their Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Prediction Esports to watch us live Tuesdays at 9. Um, that's where we do the podcast. And then also, if you want to look up the podcast on iTunes or Spotify, just look up Prediction Two E's Esports or just Prediction. Um, that should pop up relatively quick. And they got other podcasts on there as well. Team Fight Tactics, Smash, Dota, and some esports business stuff as well, which is pretty interesting to say the least. Um, but other than that, go on YouTube, watch us on YouTube. If you're watching now on Twitch, which I guess you wouldn't want to watch twice, but um, if you caught the end, uh, it, this will be up on YouTube the, uh, the next day and the same with all the podcast feeds and stuff like that. It, it's always out on Wednesday. So check it out there. Um, what if dig wins? Uh, does James win? Um, sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't uh, think so. Like, if Dig wins, we'll figure something else out. We'll just oh, yeah. hope that won't happen. Like, it's not going to happen because me and James know yeah. it, how this it, works. It's going to get decided. It's certainly going to be decided in, in A. Sure. And if not, we'll have uh, Fairy Peak play TSM and whoever scores first, and we'll have to bet on that. <laughs> and that's how we'll do it. No, we'll okay. figure something out. We'll figure <laughs> something out. That There'll be probably some random event that we can talk about that we can – choose a winner and to break the tie if that does happen uh, okay let's see what else we got here any other twitch questions not too much here how do you fix rogue i think that would take another 45 minutes so i think we'll wait on that <laughs> <laughs> uh but the promotion tournament's gonna be fun we'll predict that coming up soon i think promotion tournaments in two weeks time uh my plan is maybe james next week i don't know when oce ends which i don't think they end in time but maybe we'll do a fake world championship prediction show for next okay. week we won't have the OCE teams, but we can, like, guess them or something. Yeah. No, which I think will be fun because there won't be too much going on. Uh, so I think that would be fun to do a fake world championship prediction show. Uh, all right. So that's it for the show. Thank you so much, James. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we'll see you again next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.